directional test because there's a direction in the problem. In other words, just, we don't care. In this example, if it's bigger than 8.17, it presented a problem. If it was lower than 8.17, it presented an equal, equally bad problem. Here, if the, the average is exactly um, 2.8, we're very happy. But if it's bigger than 2.8, we're almost equally happy. I don't care. It doesn't cost anything. For, you know, a little half a quarter of an inch of steel doesn't cost anything for the company that are selling these millions <coughs> of dollars. So, so the only problem would be, remember, the 8.0 is a status quo. Everything's fine. The, eight, the only problem would be if it's less than 2.8. So the question is, how do you tell if a your population. I mean, all the millions of bars the machine can potentially produce will be at 2.8 or higher, or perhaps the machine is defective and doing less than 2.8. The answer is you take a sample, you get the average, and of course we don't know the standard deviation of the sample. We're going to use the same formula with the estimate, of course the T version of the formula. When it comes time to do the T diagram, which we're going to continue to use, instead of taking the alpha and chopping it in, chopping it in half, of course, Half the time we're afraid of making a type 1 error if just by luck the average is too big, and half the time we're afraid of making a type 1 error if the average is too small, just by, in other words, the 8 zero really is true, but you ended up rejecting it just by bad luck. That can happen if it's too high or too low. But in this case, what happens if the average is too big? What if the average turns out to be 2.9 or 2.10? In other words, let's say for argument's sake the average really is 2.8, but your sample wasn't perfectly representative and it came out to 2.9 or 2, 3.0. No problem. If it's, if it's really, really big, we're going to accept the A0. So we can't worry about making a type 1 error on both sides. We're only going to worry about one side. So the net result is when you have a direction, we're going to wind up using what's called a one-tail test. It's a directional test, and it really comes out to the same thing as a one-tail test. We're just going to use one tail. We're not going to, we're not, which means we're not going to chop the alpha in half. The reason why we chop it in half, if you following the presentation for the last couple of weeks that of course both sides have to add up to the 5%. Now the 5% will be on one side only. The only last question we have to answer, which side, left side or right side? Well, again, at the X, we'll do it two ways, the long way and the short way. The long way is to think of, like, think it through. If the X bar is really, really big, like 2.9 or 3.0 or 3.1, and that leads to a very positive T number, then that's going to lead to accepting the A0. So the rejection region will not be here. Only when the X bar is really negative, you get a really negative number, low, below 2 point, I'm sorry, the X bar is really low, so the T is really negative, where you end up with projection. So the entire rejection region is placed on the left side. Now if you want a shortcut rule for that, you just look at the symbol in the H1. If the symbol is pointing to the left, the rejection region is on the left. If it's pointing to the right, then the rejection region is on the right. But, and if it's not equal, then it's on both sides. So that simple rule applies to every single example of the whole term. So in this case, it's pointing to the left, so we're going to make the rejection region over here. This, of course, is labeled do not reject a zero. So when you're labeling it, so when it comes to step number four, you know exactly what you're supposed to do when you end up in that spot. So now let's do the example. Well, 2.8 is given to you, and it makes sense to be put in that particular format. I'll, I'll admit that the hardest part is setting up the first step. You know, there's no mathematics involved. To read the example, know how to set it up is really the most challenging part. What was it? And if you mess up the first step, you're going to mess up everything. But the good news is I'm not going to take off points. In other words, if you make a mistake here, and that affects your calculation and everything else, I will just take off a few points for the first mistake. So you, have, you, don't, have, you don't have to worry about I mean, you should try to get it right, but you don't have to worry about it as it's a terrible disaster. Yes? Okay. What exactly was the question for this one? It's you know, number 44. 44. I'm sorry, page, page, this is number 44, page 2, 367, number 44, or number 9.44. 9. So what is the average of this data? Well, the average we're told is 2.73. What is the mu? The mu comes back from the 2.8. Uh, what is the sample standard deviation? Well, you don't have to calculate it. They give it to us 0.20. And what is the sample size? 25. So we're given the four key numbers. And the alpha we're told to use is 0.05 again. And this means a 0.05 goes here. And the degree of freedom, which we need for full precise, is n minus 1 is 25 minus 1, which is 24. Now the question is, what is the t number that you're going to be looking at? Well, again, I know by heart, but 5% for the one-tailed t is 1.65, roughly. It's also worth memorizing those couple of key numbers like that. So this has got to be a little bit bigger than minus 1 point, a little bit less than minus 1.65, like 1.67, 1.68. 
1.69 maybe. So what is the, what is the, what is the, for those of you who know have a T-table, look up 24 degrees of freedom. Again, you don't chop the alpha in half. That's, you know, it's divided by one if you like it. You, know, you don't divide it by two, you just leave it alone. Yes, Mike? It's 1.7109. 1.7109. That's how I told you. Based on my prediction, it sounds pretty reasonable. If anybody can't get that or is finding a different number, certainly let me know. But we now completed step number three. And I mark it basically, this is a quarter of the problem. That's a quarter of the problem. That's a quarter of the problem. And the final answer, which is really two steps, you got to first of all decide to, oh, I'm sorry, do we, have to get, do we have never finished step number three? I'm sorry. What's the answer? What's the calculation come out to? Well, 5 into 4, 0 .04, 0 .0, so it comes out to minus 1.75. Am I right about that? So it's minus 1.75 is the calculation. And minus 1.75 is where? Whoa, we just made it into the rejection region, because minus 175 is more negative than minus 1.71. So the answer could only be reject A0, because we ended up in the reject A0 region. I thought you but said it was 1.65. You're getting 1.6? Oh, no, I thought you said before. Wait, no, no, I said if it was a Z problem, it would have been minus 1.65. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Therefore, I'm guessing the T should be just a little bit like 1.68, 1.69, it's a little bit off 1.71, oh, okay. and the ballpark of 1.65 or something. So now it says, uh, what decision would you make using a critical value? So if you, you can't say yes or no at this point, they're asking what decision would you make? So what is the answer? Yes? Uh, reject um, because it's not negative 1.75, it's is that a decision? If somebody hired you as a statistician to give them advice, they said to you, OK, here's a $1,000 check for your work. And you came back here, boys, here's my report. The answer is reject date zero. Would you earn your money? The guy, the guy is not, a, not even a college grad. How, how would he understand what you're talking about? Would you, what would you have to tell him? What decision would you make in English? Well, you got to read the problem. You don't have the problem there. Yes? So would you uh, to um, change the machinery or something? The machinery needs an adjustment. So adjust the machine. So the question was, do you need, do you need to adjust? In fact, I should have been, Do you need to adjust the production equipment? And the answer is yes, needs adjustment. you got to say something a little more elaborate than the other examples where they simply ask, is there evidence, yes or no? But here, they're asking something about making an adjustment or not. And it does, and now, it means it needs a small adjustment, but it still needs an adjustment. Yes, Kel. When it says, let's say, for example, it says at least, is that is that for the H0 or for the H1? Okay. A few principles you should be aware of. Um, the H0 always has a greater than or equal or less than or equal. Never put an equal sign here. Okay, that's 100 percent of the time true. So it's greater than or equal. Or less. Because if it, if it was exactly 2.8, we would also be happy. Okay. Yet, yeah, and the other thing you should be aware of the fact is that. Um, the, when they talk about the status quo was the A0. So again, if the machinery is supposed to be at least 2.8, we're talking about the A0, because that's the status quo. That's what means everything is good, there's not a problem here, et cetera, et cetera. So if you keep those two things in mind, again, if it's frustrating on a test, you get five or six people putting the equal signs here. A lot of people put it backwards. I mean, it's certainly understandable mistakes, but hopefully we don't make them because we're going over. 